Quincy, what changed in those last nine minutes, especially defensively, for you guys to go on that run? Uh, it was our defense. Uh, I think we had 11 straight uh, defensive uh, stop. Uh, we were just lucking up on defense, uh, playing together, communicate, play with a tremendous energy, and I think that was the reason why uh, we got that, that win. Terrence, what did Quincy give you guys down the stretch on both ends of the floor there, especially late? I feel like Quincy did a really good job defending. Um, he gave us a big inside presence uh, being low um, and against their zone. Um, and he, he, he offense and defensive rebounded. Um, he was just a big body down there for us, and he was really key, key to the win. Quincy, you were big late against Kansas and, and obviously in this one as well. How, how, do, how do you look at closing time? You've been in a lot of basketball games, obviously, in college. So uh, what's your approach in that, and, and how can you impact this team? I mean, my goal is just to find a way to win games. Um, like you said, I'm the oldest guy on the team, so I got to take pride in that. And, uh, you know, just being a leader out there, uh, make sure that everyone stay positive and find a way to win games. It seems like they're the matchup zone cause you a little bit of problems early in the game? Did it take a while to, to kind of figure that out? Uh, yeah, man. I, I was just overthinking it and just just moving the ball and making the right play. Um, then we, we just settled in and we started making plays offensively. But it was all good. Um, we, we got the win. You kind of just smothered, you know, goalkey for them. You know, they're, they're sh just yeah. – I mean, was he at the top of the, the scouting report? Was maybe not let him get the shots like you did? Yeah. It was, and I, I told him I was going to do that. Uh, went out and did it, man. Uh, but he's a really good player. Um, props to him. Uh, they got really good offensive scheme, and but we we did a good job uh, guarding and defending it uh, during the week in practice. Dane, last game it was Dre that provided a spark off the bench. Today it seemed like it was you. What's kind of the mentality of you guys as a bench group on this team? Uh, well, for me, it's just, um, you know, I – just doing what I can so we can get the dub, you know. Uh, every day I try to come in with energy. Um, so, yeah. It's for either Dane or Quincy. There's a, a lineup late of you two and Coleman and, and TJ out there. It's a really big lineup. Uh, what does that give you guys, especially defensively? Uh, I mean, I feel like it changed the game um, just with our rebounding, how much we were able to gain rebounds at the end of the game. Um, and they really have to just like close in a little bit in the paint. So that opened up for everybody else. For I me, mean, any of you, just against their zone, how important was it to get, you know, maybe the ball to Dane in the post and maybe get some of those, you know, <clears throat> that penetration and, and stuff like that? Um, when, when Dane subbed in, uh, when he started sailing, uh, we, we saw we could take advantage there. And during the timeout, so he just said to, to feed him. And sometimes we missed him, uh, but, that, that was a focal point to get it to Dane, uh, and we drew a place for him to get it to him and let him go to work. Uh, he's a really good player in the post. Um, I feel like he's one of the best bigs in the country, and we're gonna need him. We're gonna need him in the long run. Quincy, what have you guys learned in the three opportunities you've had? Obviously, one against a ranked team, two against a little lower level teams. What have you learned about yourself going into your biggest test of the regular season here? I mean, defensively is gonna be a big key for us to win games. <clears throat> Like today, we were not shooting the ball well. Uh, free throw percentage was uh, terrible. Um, so we had to find a way to win the game without making shots. So like I said, defensively is going to be a big key for us uh, going forward in the season. Uh, that should be our identity, and uh, we just got to keep working. I guess for either Dane or Terrence, when your identity wants to be defense, like what's that require? Mentally, from you guys, from a mindset to, to keep that energy over the course of a full game and season. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, obviously, teams gonna score, um, but just but just being the same and sticking to our principles. Uh, like throughout the like this like the start of the game, like I think it was like eight to zero, and we just stayed in there, uh, locked in more, and and, and figured out my, our mistakes. And throughout the game in the second half, we got eleven stops straight. So. Just sticking to our principles and, and being solid and staying true to what we do. Um, I feel like that's going to be really good for us. Terrence, I got to ask, do you have a t-shirt guy? Um, where, <laughs> where are you finding all these? Uh, so my friend, uh, she's back home. and uh, Well, she actually lives in Houston, but she's from Chicago. Uh, but she has her own clothing brand. And 
she designed a couple of shirts for me. Um, obviously, my boy Johnny. Um, we look like him today, actually. Um, but yeah, she's uh, she been Bianca. She's been a really real good helping me out with designs and stuff for the school. Yeah, I got some more coming up. It's a surprise, though. It's a surprise. You know, we get uh, we get a lot of blessings in life, and <clears throat> we're all sitting here because of a basketball game. And and I'd be remiss if there because there was something happened yesterday that's a lot more important. And, and Quincy didn't mention it, but it was the birth of his daughter with his fiance, uh, Natalia Rose is her name and uh you know the blessings in life of having a child are pretty special and so he was he's been gone he's been you know worrying about all of that and and uh uh so i did want to make sure that i i mentioned that because i think that's pretty damn cool um and and pretty special to be uh to be a dad and uh so he was he was ecstatic. He was uh, he was he was fired up to you know be back with the team, uh, but know that that uh, that mom and daughter are healthy. So um, I think we had eleven stops in a row until the last three. Um, this is a game that uh, I have stressed over. To be very honest with you, um, I know how good they are. I know how good a coach he is that team's going to win a ton of games um they do an unbelievable job of controlling tempo with their zone and then they run a set every trip and uh, uh maybe one of the best defensive performances by a perimeter player i've seen was Terrence shannon tonight um i think the I think Golke got up 18 threes, if I'm not mistaken, at Ohio State, um, especially after the start of the game when he hit his first one. But he had a hard time even getting a look. And uh, uh, it takes a lot of mental focus to handle that because he's away from the ball a lot. He doesn't play on the ball. Um, I thought the job Quincy did in the second half defensively was equally as impressive. Uh, there's no doubt that uh, Townsend is a terrific player. They're a team a little bit in the mindset of, of Penn State last year in that, that they can really, really beat you from three. And, um, and yet, probably the best player is Townsend. And uh, so you have to pick your poison, uh, what you want to do. Um, you know, it's hard to make enough twos. But I thought that um, uh, all of our guys did a good job. But I thought Quincy, and then I thought uh, Ty Rogers uh, in that stretch in the second half uh, was – those guys were terrific on the defensive side. Uh, Dane was impactful as heck in the first half, being able to, to, to get the ball in the paint. Um, it was great to see him get going there. Uh, in a night where we didn't make free throws, we didn't make layups, we didn't make dunks, and we didn't make a three. Uh, the flow, the disruption, uh, that's everything our program is about, is finding a way to win a game when none of those things go your way. It was really ugly, um, and I love that. It was, it's, you know, you wish you made a few, but we didn't. And you've got to find a way to win ugly games. And, and tonight we did that with an unbelievable defensive effort, and, and, and I'm, we beat a good team. And uh, um, excited to pull away late, and the last seven minutes were pretty good, and, and uh, put this one in the in the W column because that will help us with the net, and it'll help us with uh, Ken Palm and all the analytics uh, as we uh, as we move on down the road. That's a good basketball team. <clears throat> Just more on uh, Quincy and his defense. He's kind of. Kind of wrecked him down the stretch there. How much did he change the game when he went on Trey? Yeah, I mean, we, you know, we we thought that he's 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 had a little bit of problem scoring oversize, um, 
but um, again, every action that they ran was to him, and and we changed our coverage for him, uh, which I don't usually do. But but uh, um, you know he's a very good isolation player, um, and um, you know his physicality early got him going. Uh, but you can't move Quincy. You know there's a there's an advantage to being six eight, two thirty five with long arms and 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 can jump. And his uh, um, his 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 defense changed the game. It, it it suffocated them. That's why we had eleven straight stops. You talked about just down the stretch. His focus is pretty much solely those making winning plays. And, and you mentioned him not bringing up the birth of his daughter. I'm just curious, like, is that maturity uh, being as old as he is, or is that something that you've observed even going back to recruiting him the first? No, he's he's that's maturity. It's experience. It's um, what a wonderful human being he is because he's a terrific terrific young man. Um, you know, he's always been about team first and, and, uh, you know, everybody that's coached him will, will say that, but, uh, um, I'm darn glad he's on our side and, and I'm, you know, I'm glad I get to spend every day around him cause he's a, he's a, he's a fun guy to be around and he's, he's very mature. The players talked about defense being the identity of this team. What do you think this team is capable of on, on that end compared to even some of your teams that have been very good on that end? Yeah, I mean, you know, the group we had out late was big. You know, there's a lot of size. There's a lot of size out there, and and um, you know, there gives you some versatility that it makes it hard to shoot over. You know, I think that that um, our athleticism. You know, I, I I think Terrence is as good a perimeter defender as as there is in the country. Um, he proved that tonight, and there was no separation. And you start watching how hard he sprinted to. Uh, get through screens, and then he's strong. Uh, Ty, you know, and and then I thought, you know, Quincy and and uh, you know Coleman and Dane were in there for for a second, and and then we put Luke in, who's a cerebral player, and so I, I you know, I think that's an advantage we have that we haven't. We've always had a uh, a smaller guard that's given us a challenge or two, and I still think we've got some things we've got to we've got to work out. But Oakland is so different. And they never ball screen. They're, they're, they'll probably be the lowest ball screen team in the country. And in a world where everybody ball screens, and then they play that damn junk 1-3-1, one, one, whatever hell kind of defense that is. And it, it just keeps you out of rhythm. And, and then you, you put that with their shooters, and they're really good. Terrence said that Golke was obviously a big part of the you know, the scouting report for this team and that he felt like they did a good job of, you know, in practice sort of preparing for that. Did you see him, I don't know, maybe embrace this opportunity to shut down a guy that had oh, 18 yeah. threes? And we've talked, I mean, I think he had 41 or 42 three-point attempts through their first game and their two exhibitions and no twos, no twos. And, uh, um, you know, that's the – that's a key, and you, you've got to limit his opportunities. We, our whole key was to be there on the catch and force him to dribble. And if you wanted to shoot one over the top of 6'6", six, six, uh, great. Um, and if he made them, you pat him on the rear end and say, great shot. But over the course of time, you had to wear him down and make him, make him, make him earn it. And, and I thought we did a good job of that. Against that matchup zone, do, do you feel like you got the shots that you wanted, or were there some challenges there getting – Good shots. We we got the shots. We just played a little bit out of rhythm. I thought we were hesitant. That's on me. That's we you know we haven't spent a lot of time on it up until get the preparation of the game. Uh, you know for for a couple of days out. Um, you know we don't see a ton of it, but uh, you know it was more me just um, you know I like the layups we got. I like the dunks we got. I you know I thought we got good threes. I thought we just got. You know they're always jumping in a passing lane, so they stop ball movement, and then they force you to, they force you to drive it. And uh, um, you know I thought once we got Dane in, I thought Dane did a really good job of being able to seal and do some things. But I, I liked our shots; we just didn't make them, and then we got fouled and didn't make any free throws. Has this been this team maybe different than other teams you had because you go into a game and you don't know who you're going to play maybe down the stretch. Other teams, you know, you, you knew Trent or Iowa were going to be on the floor, but this team's a little bit different in that you you have a different lineup. How does that change your game planning heading in? 
Yeah, I, I mean, it's it's just it's it's a really nice problem to be very honest, um, because it's just kind of the hot hand and and how you how you feel. We did the same thing against Kansas. Uh, we found a group we really liked in the Eastern game, and tonight it was for a different side of the court. We just found we found five guys that worked, and uh, uh, you know probably would have left Dane in had he just not gotten tired. Uh, but you know, it was it, it. It's just it's a nice field to know that there's there's solutions on the bench, and and uh, you know you're just going to find that that right group. And uh, uh, so I feel I feel really uh, blessed to have that. Coach, what was your message to the team? Obviously, after this gutsy win with Marquette coming in um, next week. Yeah, I I I was ecstatic. I mean, I like I haven't slept very good. Because of, because of them, and you know it, we played this these games for a reason. We have a few more coming up um, that are really considered mid major programs. But that's an old team. That's a veteran team, and 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 nobody likes playing Oakland. You know they have a hard time scheduling games. Nobody likes playing them, and so you you know you know you're going to be in for a dogfight, and it's a different type of game because you know that you're going to see. A zone, and you're going to see great offense, and um, you know it, it's a um, great preparation game. Um, so I'm happy that we won it really ugly, because guess what? You know I've won a couple NCAA tournament games, you know shooting 30 percent. Sometimes you get just you just got to find a way, and we have to figure out a way to have resilience and toughness, and not let bad offense or Lack of offense affect our defense, and I thought we did that tonight. <clears throat> Brad, on the note of closing time, it seems like Quincy's really earning your trust in that, and probably what you envision getting a 24-year-old uh, with that much experience is what you've seen in him in those really key moments. Well, I think the other piece to that is he's he's really strong, he's really athletic, and he's versatile. And you know whether it was the three in the Kansas scrimmage that he hits from the corner. Or or a rip drive or tonight just you know and he hit a three tonight but you know he did it in different ways it was his defense tonight it was a couple offensive rebounds it was stepping up making two free throws it's just a it, it's a it's a smorgasbord of what he's doing he's doing a little bit of everything and that's experience and then really gifted physical tools. So you guys are 51 percent from the free throw line through two games. Like, what would you think is? Is there anything you can see? I guess that's that's an issue there. Shit, I don't know. I mean, we practice them all the time, and I, you know, it, it's a, jeez, I'm, um, yeah, you got to step up and make them. I, I, I don't. It's, it's not that we have bad shooters, um, you know, and and uh, what Terrence shoot last year, 80. 84, 85 percent, and I mean he he missed more free throws the other night, you know, in the Eastern game than he's missed in a season. Um, yeah, I, you know, man up, step up, concentrate, and make them. And uh, we can practice them all day, but till you put sixteen thousand in the stands and and um, breathe a little harder, you know, and we run them, we do a lot of ways, but we'll make them. I, I got all the confidence in the world that we'll make them. We did tonight down the stretch and um, unfortunately it was it's frustrating to run good stuff get great shots and then not make them in the first half see you tomorrow at the stadium